Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. With the vCore 3.1, Radtrick has created a 3D printer that can easily trade blows with the best in its league in terms of flexibility and customizability, while still providing an almost complete kit which many of the other DIY enthusiast printers do not offer. But it is not without its flaws, so in this video I will explore everything that is good and bad about the Radtrick vCore 3.1. Before we get started, I want to give a big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Not just do they make super high quality PCBs that are very affordable, they also have manufacturing services uh, that offer 3D printing. So if you want any engineering grade plastics 3D printer that you just can't do at home, or any special resins, or even metal 3D printing or powder bed fusion, they have got you covered. They also have very affordable prices on those options, uh, so if you thought well, there's no way I can get something metal 3D printed, it's going to be way too expensive. Maybe go check them out, it's actually quite affordable. Now, the Victor 3.1 is not a complete printer. I mean, Roderick uh, does uh, sell a kit and you can customize what you want in it. However, there are still some things that you will have to buy yourself. Though to give some context, that is actually quite good in this kind of scene of 3D printers. Some alternatives uh, to the Rattrick Vicor 3.1 would be uh, like the Voron uh, 2.4 or the Voron Trident or on the more DIY side like the VZBot or the Havort uh, printers. But, well, the Voron printers uh, are now available uh, from many different retailers like LDO or the various Chinese ones. Uh, they do not have any official Voron kits. However, one could argue that uh, the Warren kits that you can get on AliExpress or LDO Motors or uh, many other places are more complete than the Red Rig one. However, it is a third party and uh, sometimes you just don't know what you get. With the VCBot or Vort, uh, it is even more self-sourcing and it is uh, much more of a DIY approach. With Rattrick, uh, they strike a convenient balance where you can choose to just get the basic frame uh, that includes all the linear motion components, all the lead screws, uh, all the extrusions, uh, the nice big bed, uh, but like none of the other components, like none of the electronics, uh, none of the like heaters or anything like that. Now that is what uh, Rattrick has provided uh, for this video. Uh, they sent over uh, the 400 uh, millimeter version of the uh, Vico 3.1 mechanical kit. Now, I did choose to uh, also order through them uh, the heated bed and the um, little uh, spring steel top for it and some of the motors as well, just because it uh, was more convenient, uh, but I did pay for those out of pocket. Now speaking of sizes, I uh, just mentioned this is the 400mm version, but they actually have a 200, 300, 400 and 500mm version. Uh, I wanted something fairly large so I could play around with uh, various ideas I have in mind for the future, uh, but at the same time I didn't want to go too humongous. This printer is already huge and just like barely fits on this table and is really cumbersome to work around, so the 500 would have probably been too much. Uh, but uh, like I think the 300 is probably the sweet spot if you just want an everyday workhorse printer, but the 400 also still can, just barely works. Moving on in the hardware overview, for the extruder, the Radrick uses the EVA extruder system, which is very flexible. It might not be the lightest or the most amazing system, but it has great compatibility. You can basically freely choose whatever extruder and hot end you like, just grab the components and it's all gonna interchangeably work together. And if you ever want to change out the hot and the extruder, that is very easy to do as well. They also have various different cooling options that you can uh, interchange, so it's a very flexible system. Though one could argue that it has a lot of hardware in it and is a lot heavier than it would have to be. For my system, I chose uh, the LDO Motors uh, Orbiter version 2.0, uh, which was graciously provided uh, by Banggood, linked down below. And the hot end is the Mosquito Magnum, uh, which was graciously provided by Slice Engineering, of course, also linked down below. I uh, was very happy to uh, be able to try out this very high-end hot end. Uh, I had never worked uh, with them before, and so far I'm quite pleased. Then controlling all of that is uh, Big Tree Tech Octopus Pro, uh, which was uh, graciously supplied by Big Tree Tech. Uh, of course, also linked down below. And uh, it has support for 
eight uh, stepper drivers and they even support the uh, 50 volt uh, drivers on this board which I'm not currently using but I could potentially uh, upgrade to in the future. Right now I'm just using some uh, regular 2209 stepper drivers and uh, they work great. Then finally uh, this entire system is running Clipper which means that it have a convenient web interface that lets you customize everything. It's super fast, but I'm sure you guys are all familiar with Clipper as it has become extremely popular lately. And as for the plastic parts, uh, you can get them printed through Rudrick as well. Uh, they are quite affordable. Uh, however, they are printed in uh, PET G and, and neon green. Uh, so I chose uh, to print my own out of ABS in nice black. And I think this just makes the whole printer look so much stealthier. Now it does not look like a Rudrick from a mile away, but I'm fine with that. Sorry guys. Uh, I just much prefer the matte black aesthetic. I also think uh, that ABS, especially around the tool head, is the better choice. Uh, PEG is really borderline. Uh, if you're getting like uh, up and close, even without an enclosure, with a bed this large and pretty higher temperature materials, uh, PEG is kind of might get weak at some point, uh, or if you just go a bit too far, might melt and sag. So having ABS parts, especially around the extruder, is quite a nice feature, and it's not really that much harder to print. Overall, uh, printing all of these parts took around 700 grams of filament, so really not all that much. Compared to Voron 2.4, it does a lot less uh, 3D printed parts in this uh, than in that other machine. So that is a rough overview of uh, the printer itself. Uh, but let me tell you about some of the unique things uh, of the Vcore 3.1 compared to some other printers. It is, of course, a Core XY printer. Uh, meaning that the hot end on the top moves in X and Y direction and uh, is controlled by two stationary motors in the back. This is great as you don't have to accelerate the quite heavy motors and uh, allows you to really quickly move a fairly light gantry around. And then the other most striking feature of course is this big kinematic bed. It is controlled by three independent stepper motors with a lead screw and a linear rail and uh, it allows uh, this bed to automatically uh, compensate for it to be tilted. Before every print starts, uh, the touch probe probes all three uh, corners or like the two corners and the middle of the back where the lead screws are attached and if they are out of whack, for example one of them is lower, then it will automatically detwist the platform and make sure that everything is nice and level. Now obviously it also still has mesh bed leveling in addition to that, but uh, this feature ensures that even if one of the motors gets moved uh, when it was turned off, you still don't have to compensate for a lot in the mesh bed. It also is uh, very nicely magnetically coupled. So uh, here you actually have these steel balls with magnets in here. So uh, when this big aluminum plate expands as it heats up, it will actually not create any stresses, uh, but nicely uh, move on these and uh, not create a bow because of that. For my mesh bed uh, level calibrations, uh, the entire uh, flatness of this uh, big aluminum plate, which is like 400 by 400 millimeters, uh, has been within around 0.2 millimeters, which is actually really good. You could almost get away without mesh bed leveling on this big of a size. However, of course, mesh bed leveling is amazing and you don't even have to probe every single time. You can just uh, save the profile and load it automatically as long as you're at the same temperature. That is, of course, all configurable through Clipper. The electronics of this printer, they are quite a bit more open. And that's one of the gripes I have with Rotary is that uh, well, they have very detailed instructions and a very good guide on how to do all of the mechanical assembly. But then the instructions for the electronics is basically, here's a wiring diagram uh, of all the low voltage stuff and the high voltage stuff we don't even tell you about. Uh, the high voltage stuff is also basically the only stuff that you cannot get in the kit. You can get the controller board, you can get the power supply and all the low voltage uh, things included in your kit. However, like the socket uh, receptacle for the high voltage stuff is not included. Now I can somewhat see where they're coming from. They don't want to uh, have to uh, deal with C certifications uh, and stuff like that. But on the other hand, by not providing this stuff and not even telling you in the guide how to do it, it's almost more dangerous because people might just 
do it uh, whatever and hook it up in a dangerous way because they don't know any better so I really wish that their guides at least include uh, the sections about the high voltage uh, wiring and you wouldn't have to uh, go around digging in videos or on their discord, ser discord server or something like that uh, to be able to find that. Another thing that is not included for some reason or not, and also not available at all is the back electronics panel. It's called optional but it's not really optional. Uh, for one, if you don't add the panel, then where are you going to put the electronics? Just out on the table. And also, if you don't add the panel, there's a big old weird space in the back that is not used for anything. So it's really not optional. Uh, but uh, while I think the reason why they originally didn't include it is because it's a really big piece. Uh, but they have now released files for a split version uh, that is four individual pieces that can uh, um, slot together, which also allows you to uh, install it after the fact. And those they could easily fit in and like, I'm sure they can uh, have a laser cutter and just uh, cut those pieces out. You can get them in various other third party retailers but it just is kind of a pain that you have to uh, get it ordered from a different place. Uh, although they are already shipping you big aluminum plates and big extrusions uh, to the point where uh, those panels would not have increased the shipping cost at all. Just something to keep in mind. I, for myself, uh, just uh, got some uh, black plastic. It's a bit too soft for my taste, but acrylic was just way too expensive around here. And threw it onto my uh, Roderick Killer B CNC and uh, zipped it out real quick. Uh, that was no big deal for me, but if you don't have a CNC, uh, tracing it out behind is possible, but getting all of the holes aligned is a bit of a pain. It's possible and doable, but it would be so much convenient if they would just send you the laser cut pieces in the package. This also brings us nicely into the assembly of this machine and uh, I have already released a time-lapse build of it uh, where you can see all the different steps that were involved. Uh, don't want to go over everything. Uh, overall, I would say the mechanical assembly part was pretty straightforward. Uh, getting everything nice and square took a bit of patience but was very much doable as long as you have a nice flat table to work on and you take your time assembling the mechanics of this could be done by just about anyone. However, when it comes to the electronics, as I've already mentioned, uh, the guide just kind of end and it gets a lot more complicated as there's a lot of different things happening. And uh, although I've built 3D printers before and I'm very up with electronics, it still took me quite a while to get everything wired up and uh, nicely working and uh, hooked up and reading through all the different manuals of the different pieces to get it configured. Luckily though, once you move on to the software, it gets better again. And uh, Rad OS, which is the version of Clipper uh, that I, I'm using here, which is basically just a pre-configured uh, Clipper installation, is really convenient. Uh, you still, still have to go through most of the steps that you have to go through in a Clipper installation. However, a bunch of the profiles are already set. All of the things for example for input shaper is already pre-installed uh, all the themes are already installed uh, there's a default configuration already there so you just have to set up a couple of things and you can get up and running really quickly and it's hard it is still a clipper with mainsail on top of it though so you can customize it to your heart's content and i have uh, changed quite a few things in the configuration and uh, the way they have set it up, they have like a master configuration file and then a bunch of linked files, which uh, is quite nice uh, for beginners as you don't have to see all of the options. However, it is a bit of a pain having to copy in all of the options from the uh, linked files into the master file to overwrite them for any changes you want to make. But it is absolutely doable. And with that, I guess we are at the point where we want to talk about printing with this thing. And well, it is a very sturdy frame with fast kinematics and a good motion planning system so yes it is fast and yes it prints nice uh, but that's not really a surprise and you should really expect that from a printer that it costs over a grand and you have to build yourself but let me try to quantify that a little bit more this benchy that i printed here uh, is not a speed benchy that was not the goal of it uh, but it is i would say one of the nicest benchies that i have printed and it still only took half an hour uh, now, you can of course uh, print a Benji in uh, 5 to 10 minutes on a machine like this, but then it's going to look like garbage. But this Benji looks really nice and it still only took about uh, half an hour. Whereas on a machine like the My Prusa, uh, to get a similarly quality Benji, I would probably have to slow down the settings to a point where it takes about one and a half hours. 
So we're talking about roughly three times the speed for the same quality. This point, um, I should also probably mention, I'm using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and uh, sliced most of these parts with the Arachne in the new Prusa slicer. Uh, so that gives you a bit of context. My default print speed uh, here is about 200 millimeters a second, which is really fast by most people's standards. Uh, but on this machine, you could probably even uh, bump it up even further. I found almost a limiting factor is the cooling. Uh, although I'm using a dual uh, 5010 uh, radial fans in the back, uh, which should provide ample cooling. Uh, as a reference, most printers use at most one of them. Uh, still, printing so fast with such high flow rates, uh, they can barely keep up. Having the Slice Engineering Mosquito Magnum on there, though, does mean that I can really push those high flow rates. Uh, pushing 30 or even 40 cubic millimeters a second is no problem at all. That means that I can print big parts quickly. For example, this huge vase here, which doesn't look great, but that's not a fault of this printer. That's just a fault of me, my slicing uh, profile and uh, me overestimating the overhangs a bit. But this humongous part uh, only took about six hours. Uh, that is quite impressive that you can print, granted, a vase mode part, but still, this is uh, almost 400 millimeters uh, tall and like 35 uh, centimeters uh, wide and quite impressive. However, that such high flow hot and it does have one drawback and that is stringy. Now, in the beginning I had a lot of stringing problems, but uh, part of that was just the settings not being uh, quite tuned properly and me using some slightly moist filament. But even with pr properly dried filament and uh, quite well tuned settings, there still are some little fuzzy strings in the Banshee and I'm not expecting to get rid of them anytime soon. Though I do have a similar problem with the Dragon High Flow Hot End that I'm using in my Boron Zero Point One. There it's a little bit better, uh, but it still has a bit of those fuzzies. But that is just to be expected with a High Flow Hot End. I'm also not sure how uh, the 0.6mm nozzle influences that. I haven't had enough time uh, to play around with smaller nozzles, though I don't really see the reason to put a smaller nozzle onto this uh, printer, especially with Arachne out now. Uh, uh, 0.6mm nozzle is probably the smallest I would use. So to sum up, would I choose this machine again? Yeah, no, I do think so. Even if I had to pay for it myself, uh, this for this kind of big printer and high speed uh, operation, this is a great option. And depending on how you spec it out, of course, the price is going to come out different. Uh, but around $1,500 uh, is probably a good uh, rough estimate for a machine like this. And I think that is uh, quite reasonable for what it is capable of. Now, as for my plans for this, um, building it like this was just the first step. I wanted to see how it works and uh, kind of review the machine in its base configuration. But I do have some great plans for it. And the fact that Banggood didn't send over one, but two of the orbiters might give you a hint. But I'm probably gonna uh, wait uh, with that a little bit as Radrick teased uh, some similar ideas as well that might get released soon. So before I spend too much time engineering my own solution, uh, I'm gonna wait uh, to see theirs. And also at the same time, uh, I'm quite busy at university right now. And so uh, don't uh, expect the next part to be too soon, but expect the next part to be really epic. So I guess that's a good idea to subscribe then so you won't miss it uh, when it finally does come out. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Also, big thanks to Roderick for the frame, for to Slice Engineering for the heart and for to Banggood for the Orbiter Extruder and to Big Tree Tech for the controller board and of course also to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.